Hey, what's up? It's B the Installer here with the 2021 Samsung frame. Different mount, different style, different One Connect box. I'm excited to see how different it is. Let's check it out. So the accessories for the Samsung frame are as follows. First we have the no gap wall mount which is much lighter and smaller. I've heard it's a bit more difficult to install so that's why I need to watch this install video. The Samsung frame and some of the other high end TVs have the one connect box which has all the ports in this and therefore you only have to run the one wire up to the TV. So we'll put this on the side and we'll connect the one wire to this and I'll plug it in later. The feet look a little different. They don't just pop in. Looks like they got a little mechanism to cinch them in and they kind of pop in place. And then here on the left we have the one wire, the remote which is smaller this year, and then we have the power cord. And I'll show you these more in depth as we use them. So this is a pretty cool remote. It's very sleek and it has this USB charger on the bottom now and it can be charged with light in the room. So pretty much guaranteed it's never going to run out of power and if it does connect it to the USB quick to your phone charger. The buttons with the Samsung remote are pretty straightforward. Power up, down, right, left, center, enter button, and then the sound and the channel up and down button uh, are both very easy to find on this remote because you can just feel those buttons. Have a Netflix, Prime, and Samsung TV Plus buttons as well. So it's a pretty cool remote. I wish it had a backlight to it, but besides that, it's awesome. So the One Connect box was supposed to be different on some of the newer 2021 TVs, but this looks very similar to the 2020 model. So it looks like for the Samsung frame, that One Connect box is still very similar. It has USB ports, cable connection, optical out, ethernet, and then it has four HDMI ports. The one HDMI 3 is ARC or eARC enabled, meaning that you can connect your soundbar to this, although it makes it a little difficult when this box is somewhere else than to run back to your audio system. And the HDMI 4 is your game port that has 4K at 120. And this is where the one wire connects to this box. So. We have all the connections on the back. It does have an additional USB on this side. And I believe you can connect an external hard drive to this. So the 2021 unit has more memory. So real quick, the Samsung frame wall mount has me a little confused because they used to have one mount in the middle that was kind of like a picture frame. Now they have two, one on each side that you have to connect and you have to use two different pieces. Also, they do have a 200 by 200 millimeter VESA pattern in the middle that you can use on a standard mount. But if you use a standard mount, you're gonna lose the frame look because it doesn't have that flat look against the wall. You'd have to have a recessed area for that mount to fit in. Then you also have a new one wire connection that goes up instead of to the side. And that one wire does need to be inside some sort of conduit. And I'm gonna show you that in this install. So let's check out the wall mount, even though it doesn't say no gap anymore, it just says wall mount. So that's kind of interesting. Let's see how flat this actually looks. So one thing has kind of stayed the same, which are these screws from Samsung that can strip if you use too much force. So you'll need to create a pilot hole in the wall to put these screws in. But this wall mount is much different. So you have two pieces labeled E and F, and then you have two corresponding pieces that are magnetic, but they have these little hooks that are gonna hook on. So we're gonna put this mount together and show you how to do it, but it definitely is different from last year. So we have four pieces. We have E and F, which are wall plates that go on the wall. Then we have the left and the right brackets, which are A and B, and those go on the TV. In previous models, they would have a template you could put on the wall and kind of understand where it's gonna go. Well, this year, they just give you a diagram. So it's a bit more difficult to understand, and you'll have to look at your size TV to figure out how far apart they are, and they're in millimeters and in inches on this side. So it's a bit confusing, but stick with me. I'm gonna put these brackets on the TV first, and then I'll show you how the wall mount goes on the TV and on the wall, and then we'll get it set. Definitely not sure what these are. There's some sort of sticker that go on these two spots on the TV. I'm gonna put them on. Um, not really sure we need them, but we'll go ahead and do it anyways. 
the arrows are supposed to face each other. So make sure that you have that hole over where the bolt goes and the arrows facing each other. That's what they say. So for A and B, these two left and right brackets, they have three different pieces. There is a bolt, there is a flat washer, and then there's this bracket. And this bracket and all this fits in together, and when you put it on there, it kind of it fits in these top two areas right there and snaps in place. Then we're gonna screw this right into the TV. So I'm gonna do that real quick and follow along. If you pull the bracket out, then you can hold on to it while you attach it. And then you kind of have to finagle this bolt with the fat side sticking down and the flat side sticking out to your bolt, put it in this hole right here and then attach it to the back of the TV. It's a little tricky, but you gotta get your screwdriver in there and holding onto this bracket with your hand it makes it a little easier. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Then you pull out these arms and we'll wait for the next move. This square piece needs to be level so that it fits in between the two notches there. So it can be loose, although I don't find it very ideal for everything to be loose. So then on the wall, what's gonna happen is these brackets are gonna sit like this up against the TV. So now we have to properly space these brackets so that they can fit inside there. So that's pretty much for the back of the TV. Let's get up on the wall and do that. So we're gonna have to do a little math. I'm gonna go over the math quickly on the wall, but you'll have to use the guide below to figure out where the bottom of your TV is, measure up, and that's the distance here at D is where you're gonna have the top row of holes. And if you know where that top row of holes is compared to the bottom and on the wall, then the TV should line up to where you want it. So let me go ahead and do that on the wall. Bit confusing, but you're gonna have to do the math if you're installing this yourself. Fifty-four and a quarter, so twenty-seven and an eighth. Everyone needs to choose their own height for the Samsung frame. It's nice to have it, you know, somewhat eye level if you're walking around as art. But on a wall, especially over a fireplace, it has to be in the right spot for you for viewing the TV to make it kind of look normal on the fireplace. Normally, I say four to six inches off a mantle, but in this case, it's going to be nine to match these beams here. We're gonna make a hole here that's gonna run over to the side and the one connect box is gonna sit next to their dresser here. So all that's good. I actually put a little bit of this conduit in the wall that helps keep that cord safe in wall because you shouldn't have it in wall by itself because it's not in wall rated. Check with your local code on that sort of thing. A lot of people would be just fine having this cord exposed because it's very thin and it's unlikely you'd really notice that wire if it's outside the wall. So if you got the frame and now you're scared to put the wire inside the wall, don't worry, it's super, super thin. You probably won't even see it. I'm gonna explain it real quick because it still is pretty confusing, but from the bottom of our TV up to this measurement is D. D is where the top row of holes will sit. So this will sit just like that. Now, how do we know where left and right is? Well, for me, I have a set distance, the fireplace, the center of that is right here. And then the total distance from this side to this side is what the measurement B is. So this total distance for B is 30 and three quarters for a 55 inch. And so I measured 15 and 3 eighths each way and then double check that distance by measuring the whole distance and making sure it lines up with what you said, which it does 30 and 3 quarters, perfect. So that's really all you need. You don't really need the A distance to the side and you don't really need the C distance to the top because if you know the bottom and you know your left and right, then you have your two marks for that mount to sit. So let's get that mount on the wall. So now we'll check for studs and or use toggle bolts to get these two brackets up and level and then we'll hang the TV. So I'm gonna check for studs where both of these mounts are gonna sit. So we have a stud 
right where we need it on this side, but on this side we don't. So if you have wood studs and drywall in your home, I'd probably just recommend hitting the stud if you can, and if not, definitely use these toggle bolts. I'll put a link in the description, but these are one of my best tools for installing TVs. If you were to go out and buy a pack of 10 of these, you would be able to use three or four of these on each side. And what they do is, they go through the wall, through the drywall, they pop open on the other side, and then you suck this zip tie tight up against it. And it holds onto that drywall a lot stronger than just some sort of anchor that you drill into the drywall and it just kind of uses its pressure to hold. This going against the back of the drywall is much more secure. I mount gigantic TVs with these toggle bolts, so I highly recommend them. This stud here might hit, so we'll make a mark there, same at the bottom and I'll probably put another toggle bolt to the right because the stud is way over here and it won't hit. Same with on this side, we'll mark the holes, mark these two holes over here, and again, we're gonna hit a stud there and probably toggle bolt at least the top, if not both, on the left. So now it's just making holes and hanging these up, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna use a combination of the wood screws that come with the Samsung mount um, that do need, I think it's a 1 8 inch hole, but you can actually take a bit and hold it up. It should be the same size without the threads. And for the toggle bolts, I actually take a one and a half inch hole. So I'll do that for all the toggle bolts. So we ended up hitting a stud on both sides, so that's good. And then we'll connect the other side of the brackets with the toggle bolts. And then we actually have to put the toggle bolts in first before we put the bracket up. Otherwise, we won't be able to get behind the mount. So we wanna make sure this is level. So actually it looks quite good. We're good to go. Let's double check that our distance is the same. I'm gonna measure this distance right here and then measure it on the back of the TV to make sure we're good. I've checked the distance on both and it's just between 30 and a half and 30 and three quarters, which is what we needed. So it should fit nicely and square up in center. So in order to know where to make that hole, I'll actually measure the TV. And if I put the tape measure upside down, it makes it easier to measure then from left to right, that one connect wire is in the center of this TV. So it's 49 inches wide and I could put that hole anywhere from like 22 to 25 inches wide. And then to know where to put it top to bottom, I have about a 28 inch tall TV that connects in here and that wire goes down so I could make it from seven to 10 inches tall. Uh, and I'm gonna use that box, so seven to 10 inches from the bottom of the TV and then centered on the TV. So I'll go ahead and put those measurements up there and we'll cut that box. So I measured seven to 10 inches and in the center. So that's my center mark. So we know we're basically in this range. And then I'll make a little notch at seven. So that's seven and then I'll make one at 10. So the box can go somewhere in this area. Now I have to check and make sure that there's no stud there. So let's check the stud right now. So it looks like there's a stud right in the middle. So what I'll do is I'll just offset it to the left because I'm gonna run the wires that way down to the side. So I'll just put my box on that left side of the stud, which is actually pretty cool because then I can also screw that conduit into the side of the stud inside the wall. So it doesn't really matter either way, good to go. You literally could put that hole anywhere you want behind the TV because even though that wire wire connects right here, then it could go up and into the hole or down and into the hole. As long as it's behind the TV and as long as you don't kink that wire, therefore breaking it. 
So for the hole that I'm gonna be making for the one wire to run through, on each end I'm gonna put one of these low voltage boxes. I'll put a link in the description, but basically you can find them at any Home Depot or any hardware store. And then I'm gonna put one on the side of the fireplace and I'll show you how I make that run. And then we can just plug that into the one connect box and then plug that into the wall. So this might happen in your situation, but it happened here. There is actually a stud that goes across and up. So like I said, you can put that conduit pretty much anywhere behind the TV. So I'm just gonna shift it up into the left and therefore that wire will go down and then back up into the hole. If I go below that stud, I'm a little concerned it might be too close to the bottom of the actual TV. So we'll go right here. I'll do the same thing down here for this box and then I'll have a blade plate that I'll cut a one and quarter inch hole in it for the wire to come out. So there's the stud. I'm gonna bring it out in the front so that we have good access to it and I'll make it the same height as these ones here. We have the mount up, we have the hole made. So now we're going to run the one connect wire in the wall. If you're going to do that, I advise you to make sure you have some sort of conduit to keep it safe in the wall. Running this sort of wire in the wall is not up to electrical code and could put you at risk for fires. You also could just leave this exposed outside the wall and it wouldn't be as noticeable as you probably would think, especially if it's just straight up and down. In this case, around a fireplace, it's a little tricky. So I'm gonna put the conduit in the wall. Typically, you'd wanna send your fish tape up the wall this way and take the smaller end of this wire down because it's so small. And then you could connect it to your one connect box where it's gonna sit. And then you'd have the larger end up here to connect into your TV. But because I'm over a fireplace, I have to run my fish tape down the wall and I'm gonna pull the bigger end up and I'm just going to connect it inside this and I'm gonna pull both of these up at the same time to make it easier. You could do the same. Once I have the wire, I can pull the rest of it out further and then I could actually take a screw and screw this conduit to the side of the stud right here and then that conduit wouldn't move. And all this will keep this one wire protected inside the wall. So first I'm gonna put this inside the conduit. Then I'm gonna tape it right here so it can't move and then I'm gonna fish down and I'm gonna pull this up the wall right to this point. So it may look a little goofy, but I'm gonna kinda tape this to the side. And now I can just pull both of them up at the same time by running the fish tape inside this as well. Fishing down the wall is not easy, but I'm gonna fish down the wall and when I get down there, I'll show you pulling it back up. All right, I got the wire down here. It only took me a few seconds. I'm sure you believe that. No, I'm kidding. Took a bit, got my arm a little scuffed. Had to reach in there, get this sucker out. Now we're gonna run this conduit back up the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and tape this to the outside. Tape it good, because you don't want that to come apart and have to do it all over again. Now we're gonna run that in the wall. Keep that end out there so we can tape that end up. And then we'll pull it up the wall here. There we go. And we don't want that to fall out. There we go. So we don't wanna let this go because it'll fall back in the wall. So what I'm gonna do is pull this here and now I'm gonna connect it to the stud as I said I would right there and then we're pretty much done. For now, I'll pull it out a little bit, get my screw ready and then I'll screw it in. If you're gonna use a screw like this to connect that conduit to the stud, make sure you don't screw through that one wire because then you'd have problems. So I'm gonna go ahead, run it through now. 
And then we'll get it back in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect, I just want it to hold it still. There you go. That's not going anywhere. And now that wire is inside a conduit. And that's it, that's all we have to do is connect this in, hang the TV, and then go to the other end and connect the one connect box to the wall, and then we'll fire it up and get a good look at it. Put the wire through the hole and put this cover plate on and it'll finish up this end. So now, we have this one connect box, we have the one wire, and we have the power. Let's connect the one wire in here, and we'll tie that wire up more neatly. And we'll take the power here, plug it in, and then we'll connect it up. When you connect this up, sometimes the TV turns on right away. So we're gonna go ahead, plug it in, and then we'll go check the TV out and see how it looks. And it has this little tie here, this little sort of uh, Velcro tie to make it look more neat. And then we're just gonna actually set this one to the side because as you can see, their dresser goes right here. And so we'll get that in there. I'll move it out when we put it back just so we don't squish it. But once it's in there, it actually is Bluetooth to the TV. It doesn't even need to see this box. This box can just sit there, no problem. So. Let's go ahead and move everything in place and let's show you the TV. We got it up. It was a little bit harder than last year's 2020 version to install but it's up, we got it going on, let's check out how it looks. All right, it looks pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely smash the like button when you get opportunity. Make sure to comment below what you guys think. If you have any questions, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to be notified when I upload my next video. And just like that, you can be the installer.